and bring your hair back. We apologize for starting the conversation without you, but we'll, we'll catch you up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we want to say uh, we're starting off the segment talking with attorney uh, Lisa Showman, and of course, she is here, uh, courtesy of the referendum unit, talking about the legal challenge to the special agreement and other things I see, Jay, as well. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. I um, I'm so honored to have been asked to deal with this by the referendum unit. I want to make it very clear. I do not speak for the referendum unit. Okay. My views are my own. They've asked me as a professional to give my own professional views. So what I say is not the fault of the referendum unit. I am giving my own opinionated opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to first of all start by congratulating you for that amazing show mapping the Guatemalan claim because I've been riveted to my TV the last two Tuesdays, <laughs> two Tuesdays yeah. including last night uh -huh. and w I was left wanting more so I'm waiting to watch the next segment <laughs> yeah, <true>. because it's, <laughs> it's for me not only an era that I lived through and I remember very vividly as Marlene says yeah. but also the sheer joy of having the anchors for Channel 5 present, first Carla Huchner and now Janelle Chanona, of course. Mm -hmm. The reporters who were on the ground, you know, young Stuart Crone, mm -hmm. and people who I absolutely love and miss dearly. And I'm talking about Ambassador Mike Mena yeah. and, of course, Ambassador Alfredo Martinez. And just to see the contribution that these two men made to our national security, mm -hmm. our territorial integrity for me is beyond huge. Yeah. I think it's good for young people to remember. And we were just talking that they're 18 year olds who didn't live through that. Mm -hmm. They're 20 year olds, they so 20 year olds yeah. who didn't don't remember yeah. because they were children. So I think anybody over 30, if you don't remember, it's because you weren't watching. I don't <laughs> know what you were doing. Yeah. But it's, it's must-see TV. Yeah, and I'm yeah. so glad that it repeats on Thursdays and Sundays. Yeah. And obviously that it's up and available as a, as a show that has streamed live. Yeah. Well, Lisa, we, we are so glad to have you uh, over the past few weeks having you on here, uh, uh, you know, dissecting where to go, how, yeah. how this is actually playing out. We're happy for the fact that, uh, you know, you made your sense in terms of, yeah. look, this is how I feel. Yeah. And this is how I want to carry on with my right. feelings, you know. Right. So we're happy for that. We're so glad I, to have you. And not just that, mm -hmm. my professional opinion But of course, this. Yeah. but of course. Uh, yeah. One of the things before we continue on is the, the importance of this. And this is how yeah. life is. The importance of this is for especially those who are 17, 18, 19 now, see where we came from as a country and how strong we are Can today. I, tell you, mm -hmm. I made a serious argument for lowering the vote to 16. Of course, I did not succeed in that regard. But I really think here you have it that 16 year olds can give consent to sexual activity but are not included in the nation's life. So that, that's very interesting. But I think even your 16 to those who haven't yet turned 18 are very aware of what is happening. Yes. And they are watching those yeah. of us who can vote yeah. to see what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, they will hold us accountable. And yes. I think time and time again, we will see that uh, when these persons become of voting age, they will look at us and uh, either be happy with the decision we make come April 10th or be discontent with it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Yep. But one of the things I, I wanted to ask, since you, since you mm -hmm. mentioned the show, uh, I think in, in putting it all together, I realize very clearly that dealing with the Guatemalan issue is, is cyclical. You know, yes. there, there are uh, times where it becomes uh, the most prominent issue for us in this country, and then there's setbacks, and then it becomes a prominent issue again, or mm -hmm. there's a skirmish at the, at the, bound, at the border, and it becomes uh, headline news for us. May I, may I give you Can another you, view yeah. yes. from my perspective? And you have to remember that I am talking as somebody who's been intimately involved yeah. from 1999 to 2015 yeah. when the bipartisan approach broke down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then again recently from late last year up to now. Okay. okay, so I can tell you that in all of that time and including the portion of time when I was not personally around, 
this issue has been absolutely constant yeah. and pressing yeah. for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the government of Belize to the point that this is our single most important foreign <coughs> affairs mandate yes. mm -hmm. to deal with the issue. It, that is the line yeah. ministry. So for those people who think that we were swanning around drinking cocktails <laughs> and having tea, yeah. as I was yeah. recently told, no, it's been a lot of yeah. hard work because when the media gets to it and you're at the point where you're outside those closed door meetings and you're getting the interviews, all of that is after all the hard work yeah. that has been done. Yes. And let me tell you, it's not just foreign affairs. BDF, Coast Security. Guard, um, FCD, mm -hmm. Forestry, Lands Department, mm -hmm. Immigration Department, Police, all of these countless nameless Belizeans who have worked the past 60 years yeah. to make sure that we were relentless in our guardianship of our territorial integrity yeah. and our sovereignty. Yeah. No, and absolutely. we have never wavered on that one iota. This is part of why our failure is our success. Eamon Courtney says, I think at this meeting that we had at Wesley in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he said it in an interview because he was the PUP's leader of the opposition representative, who at the time was John Briseño, mm -hmm. 2008, December 8, 2008, when the special agreement well, was signed, signed, he was interviewed, and that clip was showed last night. And Amon said, in a sense, diplomatic efforts have been a failure. The failure was actually our success in insisting that we give away not one blade of grass. Mm -hmm. The success was... <laughs> that we managed to hold that line in saying, we're not going to give you any territory. We can discuss under UNCLOS rules what yeah. the maritime area has to look like. Yeah. That's clear. But nothing when it comes to territory. And so when you have one party saying, I'm going to give you nothing, and the other party saying, I got to get something, you then cannot move past that. One of the things I think... And that's why we are where we are is, now. That yes. is also brought into focus <clears throat> is how the political changes also shifts the dynamics Absolutely. within Guatemala as well. More so in Guatemala. I Belize, mean, Belize, we've had been... But we've been more shifts. consistent. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and I want to bring that into perspective so that yeah. people can understand why do we need to know or understand or be aware of the history Okay. of any presidential candidate yes. or foreign minister yes. from Guatemala. Your show brings that out in sharp relief. I think there was a segment showing um, Foreign Minister Brees. Mm -hmm. In fact, the first segment was Said Musa mm -hmm. and Portillo. Portillo, yes. First thing. Then it was a focus on who were the foreign mm -hmm. ministers at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was a focus on Jorge Brice mm -hmm. and what his disposition was. And we don't discuss it or follow it, but then the ones who followed him were also critical, including one of the most important, which was the one and only Gert Rosenthal, mm -hmm. who we've seen over and over in interviews. Mm -hmm. He was important. Haroldo Rodas, yeah. extremely important. Yeah. On the Rosenthal and Rodas, in fact, the settlement of Santa Rosa was finally removed. Previews of coming attractions because in the next show. that yeah. they come in at the next show. Yeah. So it's important who the personalities are, are important. So you saw Why is three it, foreign ministers of Belize last night. No, four. But um, we also talked Said about Musa. Arzu. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. You saw Said Musa, you saw um, Assad Schumann, mm -hmm. you saw Eamon Courtney, and you saw Godfrey Smith. And Dean Barrow. And Dean Barrow. Okay. So five. Five. Yeah. I'm hoping next week I'm somewhere there. <laughs> but yeah. No, this is what it, and who your counterpart is critical. Mm -hmm. That much is for sure. Okay. Our present foreign minister has had his own special trajectory. And in fact, he has been the longest serving foreign minister in the history of the exactly. independent Belize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everybody knows how the management of anything has mm -hmm. occurred under his watch. Yeah. That's a whole different argument. Yeah. But also, how his counterparts have behaved. We all know what Carlos Raul Morales was like. We all know that he came here with specific goals, one of which was to 
mislead people into believing that somehow the government had said that they were going to build nothing on Sarstoon Island. And I got all the former foreign ministers of Belize, except for, I think, Dean Barrow. So it would have been all the PUP, mm -hmm. former Belize foreign says. ministers of Belize, to get up and say that is absolutely not true. So your history yeah. is important. And remember that Sandra Torres, who is a candidate, mm -hmm. former wife of President Alvaro Colom, who had his own trajectory in this, and who was very open and disposed to discussion and negotiation, but ultimately could not agree to anything because he would have been impeached. Yeah. That's reality, and, and this is a fact yeah. of what the Guatemalans let us know. Yeah. I'm not telling tales out of school, this is fact. And, yeah. and, that's, and, and I, because I wanted to look at more, uh, you know, when there's a hard line stance yes. or when there's a softening stance. Yes. And I think uh, President Portillo, uh, when he, acknowledged Belize and the sovereignty of Belize and the resignation of his foreign minister Arzu who then elevated yes. to president I think is an interesting dynamic and I want to ask you just from your own sure. history um, how much of that influences or you think this is all opinion mm -hmm. influences future presidents of Guatemala very much so they remember their own history just like we do so go back to Sandra Torres first of all she is the sister of Belizeans, yes. okay? So understand, that's, that's something that, that's a burden that she carries on her back. Sister of Belizeans. Yes. yes. She has <coughs> Belizean family. So now does she persuade the Guatemalan electorate that that is a boon <coughs> or that that is a burden? Does she make any statements that say, okay, despite the fact that I'm Belizean, my first allegiance is to Guatemala? And what are they going to be looking to her for? Because... What a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. is that her running mate, Carlos, Carlos Raul Morales, is married to a Belizean. Yes. Wow. Okay, so and also understand worked in that the embassy that here team, for an extensive, extensive amount of time. Extended period of time, he was foreign minister, had a hard line trajectory to the claim, mm -hmm. but a very pointed path towards getting by, um, bilateral agreements going. So they wanted to focus on the bilateral relationship, mm -hmm. forget about the claim for the time being. Mm -hmm. But understand, this is a team now that will have to face an electorate that says to them, who do you love more, Belize or Guatemala? Mm -hmm. And what do you think their answer will be? So that's one. Mm -hmm. The other one is Telma Aldana, who hasn't made pronouncements on the matter, but is known to be very strict on anti-corruption. In fact, she's a former fiscal general a prosecutor, special mm -hmm. prosecutor, mm -hmm. and work deeply with the SISIG. Mm -hmm. So that's her claim to fame. Okay. That remains to be seen how she will approach her foreign affairs. Unknown, yeah. Or not. And then, of course, there is the infamous or famous Zuri Rios Montt, whose father was a hardliner on Belize, and who, while she was Senate Foreign Relations Committee in Congress in Guatemala, mm -hmm did it take a hardline approach and supported the creation of the Comisión de Belice and insisted that that line of hawks had to be supported. Mm -hmm. So who is running for president in Guatemala is important. I think it is interesting that in Belize, mm -hmm. every leader of every single politic, major political party of which there are two, mm -hmm. I'm not speaking for the third parties or about them, both have said publicly mm -hmm. that going to the ICJ is the best possible approach. And that includes John Bresenio, mm -hmm. whose stance right now is governed by his party's political considerations mm -hmm. and not so much his own personal convictions, which I believe still remains a yes, because he has not retracted that statement. No, he has not. Well, he's saying... Mm -hmm. No, not unless, right now. No, no, unless not certain right now. certain yeah. things are put in place, and he yeah. did clarify that yeah. in the show the last time he was okay. here. <clears throat> I wanna, I wanna just because, <clears throat> of course, members of his party have no file suit, and we're gonna and we're gonna get to that. That's yes. part of our conversation yes. for today, and I appreciate you doing the breakdown of the presidential candidates yes. in Guatemala because it's there are difficult. implications in ter in terms of hard line stances, um, but it also. If we saw where the proposals were rejected, that was part of what was featured last night. Um, we saw 
that any leader in Guatemala can pretty much ax a process that has been uh, a, yes. has, has had a lot of time investment. How do we know? Or what certainty <laughs> do we have that this process, I will, after this presidential yeah. uh, election, after this election in Guatemala, that it won't be just cut and they say, you know what, we don't want to do this. It was the last administration's this decision. This is why the referendum coming at this moment is in time is so critical. That election is not going to happen for a while yet. And the traspaso, the changeover it's from the one time. administration to the yeah. next is not as in Belize automatic. Mm -hmm. And there is a transition period. Yes. So let's be very very clear but remember we will go to an electoral process by next year mm -hmm. by next mm -hmm. year could be before but by next year right so this is a critical juncture in which we have two current administrations that have been in power for some time mm -hmm. that have gone along with the process so far that have not reneged on it so far right and this moment in time is critical because this is not anything other than fact. It may not come again, not but, right now. Yeah. But you didn't answer my question in yes. terms of the possibility of any future president, whoever it is, yeah. saying we don't want to follow through it's on this real. process. It's, it's real. I can't tell you any more than that. To say more than that would be speculative. Yeah. The words of Assad Schumann ring in my ear. Mm -hmm serial killers of agreements, but so far, so far since 2008 until now, 11 years, they have held to the bones of what is contained in the special agreement, even though the protocol delinked the two processes and gave us separate processes. You asked me earlier, what would have happened if Guatemala, if we had held our referendum first and said no? And I told you the possibility was that Guatemala would have held no referendum. Or they could have held it and said yes. And then we look bad. You get me? So <clears throat> all of those things are always a fascinating discussion for any political and history analyst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that what we, as a practical matter, need to look at is what we have before us now. Mm -hmm. And so far, that is a process that will occur on April the 10th. Well, that's uh, one of the questions we want to talk about yeah. today. Yes. There is, uh, or there was a claim filed in court mm -hmm. uh, seeking an injunction yes. in having the referendum mm -hmm. because there is a constitutional claim against the signing of the special agreement. Now, yes. you were here, uh, I believe, just last week talking right. about the possibility of it happening, and now it has. It's a reality. The claim is, has a number. It's mm -hmm. 151 of 2019. Mm -hmm. It was filed, I believe, on the 8th of March, mm -hmm. International Women's Day, mm -hmm. filed on that date, and it has not yet been returned with a date and formally served. My understanding is that the Solicitor General's Ministry obtained an advance copy. Mm -hmm. okay. And I also obtained what is an advance copy, so that... They give you this when they're going to file a fixed date claim form because a fixed date claim form has to be returned mm -hmm. with a date and a time and a judge. Mm -hmm. That has not yet up to today, as far as I know, been determined. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Now, this claim may potentially derail the entire process <laughs> that we have been going through yes. in leading up to April 10th. Well, let me tell you who filed the claim because that's important. So the claim is made by the following claimants. Michael Espat, Oscar Requena, Rodwell Ferguson, Julius Espat, Cordell Hyde, Anthony Mahler, not John Bresenio. It's filed by the law firm of Courtney Coy. It is signed by Eamon Harrison Courtney, mm -hmm. attorney at law, senior counsel. Yes. Eminent Belizean. Mm -hmm. Also the man who was there, present, and representing the People's United Party opposition when the special agreement was negotiated and later signed. Mm -hmm. Also there in the Senate, although I don't know if he was present and I'm trying to confirm that because he wasn't interviewed, which leads me to believe he was not physically present. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that at the time he was leader of opposition business in the Senate 
when this special agreement was ratified in 2016. Now understand, it then took two years to go from ratification and later railing up because people may say, we take so long yeah. until a date was announced. People like me were so frustrated that at the time in 2017, I said, look, we don't, shouldn't be going to a referendum unless we have a re-registration, sars protocol, this, this, mm -hmm. this, this, and this. Notwithstanding that, the government announces in 2018, I think it was mid-2018, that there is going to be a referendum, and this is the date, April 10th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Nobody files any lawsuit, you know. No. You understand? Yeah. And they do not file a lawsuit when there is a declaration by five foreign ministers in January and there is declarations and rumblings and a joint legal opinion, but no filing in February. Mm -hmm. And finally, on March the 8th, 2019, mm -hmm. this claim is filed in the Supreme Court 34 days. Before 32 the days before, the, before referendum the referendum is held. Now, 32 days. The explanation, the, for this, hour. the explanation for this, and we've seen it yes. publicly, is that they were giving time for the government to rectify the situation, to really? take it to the House of Do Representatives. Do you know that the letter that was written to the Prime Minister is dated March the 5th? Mm -hmm. March the 5th, you know. Who are you giving time for what? You're going to write a letter on March 5th saying, please do something about it, please postpone the referendum. And then two days later, you file. But the Less joint legal than, opinion came out before that, yes, before the letter was yes. actually sent. And, the message I had recall, been introduced for quite I a recall, while. And this was done by three attorneys on their own. Yeah. Kudos to them for the hard work. I recall the prime minister saying, look, I'm going to take it seriously. I'll get legal advice. Yes. Okay. We fine. haven't heard anything about it yet. haven't heard anything yet. And, and then a letter is written, March 5th, less than 48 hours later, there is a filing in court. Mm -hmm. And I am simply reciting facts. People will make but, what they will of any of that. But if we know anything of mm -hmm. the history of how things work in Parliament in this country, when there is a political will or the motivation, yes. something can be done oh, absolutely. in one thing. Yeah, yes. Like, for instance... Anybody who objected to any of this could have filed a private member's bill. You realize it wasn't done by nobody? Nobody filed a private... No, hear me out, because in all fairness, Karim Musa did a private member's bill effort for um, getting diaspora voters yes. mm -hmm. on board. Why wasn't this done in this regard? I'm asking. You understand? It wasn't done. Mm -hmm. So if the concern... Just please, mm -hmm. the concern was so burning. Look, we're not talking about anything that is not fundamental. We all know how critical this vote is. In fact, the line yesterday told you mm -hmm. that people are aware how critical this is. Yes. So with something like this, my opinion, you do not wait until the 11th hour to file. And I could tell you this because... When the ninth constitutional amendment came up, no, the seventh, I immediately went to court to get an injunction to deal with the Referendum Act, and I took that thing all the way to the Privy Council in the Vales case because I was so convicted that this thing was not the right thing to do. Okay. But right? questioning the legal so strategy, timing, yes. questioning the legal yes. strategy timing at this is point is... Uh, inconsequential no it's not this is the point and i'll tell you why if you'll permit me it isn't because that is something that the court will look at mm -hmm. and say at any point in time you could have done this you didn't do it one of the hoops you have to jump through in order to get any stoppage of this referendum is why now why did you wait what are the reasons what is the balance of convenience? Because this is an election. Millions of dollars have already been spent preparing for it. And you can tell me that doesn't matter, but it actually does because it's my taxpayer dollar, mm -hmm. your taxpayer dollar, your taxpayer dollar. This is not 
a process that is lightly entered into or lightly conducted. And mm -hmm. that is one of the things that any court will take into account in the balance of convenience and whether the status quo should be maintained. I want to get into the, the another claim thing, itself. Well, yes, because that's critical. Mm -hmm. so yes. let's do and and I be, before we continue, sure. because I know obviously you're critical of the legal strategy and I think this was a question that was posed yeah. uh, to the writers of the joint legal mm -hmm. opinion and they very clearly cited the Vias case uh, that you spoke of yes. um, in looking mm -hmm. at giving time for government to be able to rectify the problem uh, or to take it Veos to the House case, of Representatives. Except but in the Veos case, no, except in the Veos case, we acted immediately. And the ruling? Immediately. We did not wait until the eve of the third reading or whatever. Acted immediately. As I said before, I think history dictates and Belizeans are very well aware that things can happen in an overnight instance sure. in this country. But so this it's not a... impossible for it to take place. But mm -hmm. go, I mean, e even if we use the Brexit case, which is one of the reference points and that they I used, it took place totally after the referendum. No, no, it was filed before but argued after. Yes. So the, the ruling came after the referendum was held. That could actually happen in this case. In this case, the court could actually go ahead to hear the referendum. And why? Because like in the Brexit case, there are serious issues that should have been explored to my mind, a long time ago, and I've set out a timeline, 2008, okay? 2009, when there was an exposition at the Wesley Church in which Senator Courtney pointed out some very serious considerations. Hang mm -hmm. on, 2016, 2018, January 2019, mm -hmm. February 2019, and you're gonna wait until 30, two days before to file. I am not saying mm -hmm. that the court won't hear it. I'm saying this is the 11th hour. Mm -hmm. I personally would not have waited that long, but what I would have done or not done is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I'm giving my professional on, opinion. On the legal strategy. Mm -hmm. What I want to do though, because I do have a, a question in response to that, but we'll take a quick break so we don't sure. start a, a new topic. <laughs> Um, sure. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue this conversation as we talk about uh, the current uh, claim before the court uh, for an injunction on the referendum. Stay tuned. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces The Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all death and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. And we're back and we're moving into our second part of our conversation. We're joined at this time by Attorney Lisa Showman, and we are diving into the recent claim uh, made by several persons from the People's United Party looking mm -hmm. at the validity of the special agreement and seeking, more importantly, an injunction uh, to the referendum. Yeah, it's not so much the validity of the special agreement as agreement. Yeah. It is whether the state, meaning the government, meaning the executive arm of government, <clears throat> had the right or the ability to enter into a treaty. More specifically the foreign minister himself who signed. Correct, because it is the foreign minister who acts on behalf of the state. And that's where I want for to treaty get, making power. That's where I want yeah. to get clarity. So, you know, I, I think it in we know one thing about you, you'll be fair in being able yes. to talk about the points that they're bringing Precisely. forward. And so part of it is mm -hmm. seeking the injunction. So mm -hmm. it can be clear to people. This is what is happening. Well, hang seeking, on. first of all, stating a declaration stating that separation of powers means that the government, the state, mm -hmm. the executive, 
did not have the ability to enter into making a treaty such as the special agreement mm -hmm. without first laying it before Parliament. Yes. Okay, that's mm -hmm. one. In the House then of Representatives. In the House of Representatives. With a two-thirds majority. And the Senate with a two-thirds majority. So that's one. Yes. Then two, a declaration that the Prime Minister, without an act of Parliament or a resolution, doesn't have the lawful power to ask the GG to issue a writ of referendum. Then a declaration that the proposed referendum, without an act of the National Assembly, House and Senate, is unconstitutional and in breach of the separation of powers. Mm -hmm. And then an order prohibiting the Prime Minister from asking the GG to issue a writ of referendum. That's the injunction. Yes. An order prohibiting the Chief Elections Officer from holding the referendum, conducting it. Yeah. And then an order that they get whatever orders they want to uphold those orders. Mm -hmm. So that is the full O oh, and costs. Let's not forget. And any other relief that may be just. Mm -hmm. Those are the normal things. <clears throat> Those last two. Yeah. The fundamental point that is being brought forward by, as we read in the joint legal opinion, is that the special agreement mm -hmm. goes against the Constitution for the very simple fact mm -hmm. that it may potentially change <laughs> in the ICJ yes. or have an impact on but in the ICJ. Let there. me finish. Yeah. In the ICJ on the boundaries of Belize as defined in our constitution. And before you get there, that the executive, meaning the state, has no capacity to enter into such a treaty without parliamentary approval. Yes. Okay. okay, so you have to take each of these <clears throat> things as flowing one after the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the court says, but of course the state has the power to do this, right? Then they did it, mm -hmm. and they don't need the approval prior of the National Assembly. So what happened in our case? The state entered into a treaty. That is the special agreement. agreement. Everybody agrees on that. Mm -hmm. There's no divergence. It's whether they had the power to do so or not. Now, in England, there is something called the Ponsonby Rule. But you need to understand, England no got no written constitution. We do. Mm -hmm. So the Ponsonby rule says you have to lay it in Parliament for 21 days before mm -hmm. the state can go ahead and do what it's going to do. And it can be discussed. Mm -hmm. Either the ruling party schedules a debate mm -hmm. or the opposition asks for it. All right. That is England. In Belize, what is required by the Constitution, mm -hmm. Section 61 A is that it be laid before the Senate. And I researched it thoroughly because at the beginning of 2016, I was still the leader of opposition business in the Senate. So I researched this. Mm -hmm. I did the work to say, what is required? What does the government have to do? <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that this thing was going to come up. Because these things don't come up overnight. No, they don't. Signaled long before. So that is what actually happened. It came before the Senate in um, December of 2016. Mm. I think it was December the 8th, if I remember correctly, and it was ratified. That is what the law says. So my argument would For first treaties. of all be, but this is a treaty. But their point is, I mean, I, I think simply moving past the fact that it yeah. does not have an impact on the boundaries is, is misleading because that's the basis of the case that they're putting forward. No, I'm sorry. It's not misleading, and I will tell you why. Because they have some big ifs written in there. There is absolutely nothing in the Constitution that says that such a treaty is not to be brought before the Senate. In fact... The Constitution says at 61A, and I took the time to look it up, authorizing the ratification, including adhesion <coughs> or accession of any treaty by the government of Belize, I'm going to read you the next words, mm -hmm. including any treaty for the settlement of the territorial dispute between Belize and the Republic of Guatemala. Explicit. And if we wanted it to be any other way, the framers would have written into the Constitution, but it must first go to the House of Representatives. And it didn't. It did not. 
if you are going to use the Constitution as a basis, and clearly <coughs> they do because they cite an application under Section 95 and 20, that's where they get the power to apply to the court, mm -hmm. and cite the following sections, 1, 2, 3, 6, 68, 69, and Schedule 1. Mm -hmm. What does Schedule 1 say? Since one of the arguments is that Schedule 1 might, might change our boundaries, that's a huge might. Mm -hmm. It has not done it yet. And in the Vales case, the law lord said to me, because I gonna argue it, mm -hmm. hello please, the government never make the changes in the Seventh Amendment that you can't can quarrel about. They actually back down from it. So what you're asking us to do is to rule on something which is academic, and we won't do it. Similarly, my view is that you approach a court saying that it might, the court will say that has not yet happened. But even for argument's but, sake, hold on, but, say that the court says, <laughs> I agree with you, it might. Let us look yeah. at Schedule 1. Let's mm -hmm. look at it. It says the definition of Belize. It talks about the territory of Belize <clears throat> and what it comprises. Mm -hmm. And it says, described as follows. One, the frontier with Guatemala is the line prescribed by the treaty with the United Kingdom and Guatemala signed on April 10th, April 30th, 1859. Please, we have been told by every single legal expert that we know of that not only is the treaty valid, <coughs> But even if the treaty is, for whatever reason, not valid, the line exists and has taken a life of its own. And that is exactly what Schedule 1 is saying. But we cannot, exactly. with any certainty, say what will Anodon. happen at the International Court Anodon. of Justice. See? And I want to, but, but let's, uh, let's, let's put, no, may, let because this complete. special agreement may I binds us, one second, okay. just... Mm -hmm. Uh, the special agreement and going to the ICJ. The ICJ is a binding decision. Yeah. It's a which mechanism means that leads to that a binding even, decision. Okay, so, so there are two things, and I want to make yeah. it clear for our viewers especially. You're talking sure. about it being an academic exercise. In other no, words, I didn't say that. Please, I did it, not say that. You were that. talking about the maybes, right, mm -hmm. or what might happen. Well, this is so, what they say, you know. If, so, me no say that, then say if. So that. if the current claim is saying that there is potential... In other words, you go to the ICJ, nobody, no human being on this earth can say exactly what is going to and happen at the ICJ. And they can't say exactly what is not going to happen. Agreed. On both Equal sides. Weight. On both yes. sides. So, if we don't fix the issue now, according huh. to their claim, mm -hmm. we cannot do it after an ICJ ruling we because can. that is binding. We actually can. But let me finish the thought I was making. Mm -hmm. Schedule 1 also says the outer limit of the territorial sea is the limit prescribed by law, measured from such baselines as maybe have been described before Independence Day by law, or otherwise, or as may be prescribed thereafter. That would include a ruling by the ICJ have no problem with the idea that if there is an ICJ ruling as a matter of political convenience, the National Assembly probably should, in a resolution, mm -hmm. confirm the decision of the ICJ. I think that would be the right thing to do. However, there is absolutely no requirement that this be done prior on the basis of an if that may never occur and if it does, at that point, that's when you can go force a vote in the National Assembly because, let me tell you, the power to make treaties is not settled by domestic law. In other words, we can't, with our domestic law, settle this dispute with Guatemala. If we could, it would have gone away a long time ago. The only way to settle an international dispute is using international law via international mechanisms, whether it be negotiation, mm -hmm. whether it be arbitration, or whether it be approaching the court. There is no other way. And so therefore, the resolution of this by necessity 
and this is throughout the history of treaties, mm -hmm. by necessity, mm -hmm. must include another state, and therefore your domestic law cannot and does not trump international, international law. law. That is a basic and fundamental principle that I learned as a first year law student back in 1983, mm -hmm. when the dinosaurs walked the earth. <laughs> 1983. <laughs> Lisa, right? we know one that not change, that but, uh, but mm -hmm. and, and we're talking about what could happen. Yes. All right, good. You mentioned cases referencing Brexit, mm -hmm. the Miller case. Mm -hmm. Understand that the Brexit case is different for two reasons. I've said one, we don't have an unwritten constitution like the UK, mm -hmm. and we do not share what is called the constitutional conventions, the rules that have grown up in Britain. We have distinct rules under the Westminster model, mm -hmm. and that is also tried first year constitutional law. Be that as it may, the Brexit case is different because Brexit involved intertwining EU lawmaking and court capacity into the daily life of British citizens in the UK, and this is the basis on which the court ruled. In other words, the court said, because this treaty involves having to graft in EU courts and EU law into British life, mm -hmm. because for many years British citizens were able to approach, for instance, the European um, Court on Human Rights. Yes. And we cite those cases all the time. Mm -hmm. But because that was grafted in to separate the two via Brexit, mm -hmm. to ungraft it, required the same thing that it required to graft it in the first place, i.e. parliamentary approval. We don't have that requirement, nor is any treaty with Guatemala going to affect the domestic law vis-a-vis citizen-to-citizen in Belize. Two different things. Let me take and a step all back the here cases because I want experts clearly, specifically cite that as being the reason why the Brexit decision gone the way it gone. Mm. As an experienced lawyer as you are, we know one thing. Thank you, I, because I'm not sure if people I know. I will that. assume one thing. Sure. I, I will assume, yes. this is me yeah. assuming, that you have prepared for cases that you have felt very confident in, yes. and the ruling did not pan out the way you had first expected. One of them Maybe is... Maybe not to full 100%, yes. even 80%, yep. 50%. Yes. So while I appreciate you speaking and even arguing you know, one the of case them was at the this point case? in time, one yes, of them was the Vails case. But moving forward, I really thought this I was claim going to is but. before our court system. Mm -hmm. It has not been assigned a judge. Mm -hmm. It has not been assigned a judge. Right. We're on crunch time. Yes. And so the clock is ticking. The <laughs> clock is quickly ticking, but it only takes a limited amount of time What's to get today? an injunction. What's the date today? Today is the thirteenth of. By this time next month, it's all over. The decision the has been made. And if there is an injunction? So there's less than 30 days. And if there is an injunction, what happens then? To get an injunction, you have to apply before the court. To get an injunction to prevent, at this point, to prevent the referendum from happening, mm -hmm. a court has to grant you an injunction. If now, the court understand grants Understand that the, I checked, the writ of referendum has already been issued. So that ship has sailed. sailed. So you're now going to have to get an injunction to stop the chief elections officer from conducting the but referendum. But that's in the claim. Hold on. Remember the first step was to injunct the prime minister. From issuing if the... that's what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. my view, my view is you needed to have done that back in January. Mm -hmm. The very latest, February. Mm -hmm. Agreed, before, but let's look at what is but presently that's, before us. So what is presently before us is the writ has been issued, so your, your hope of stopping this now hinges on getting an injunction against the chief the election elections election. officer. Now, to get that, what do you have to do? To get that, you have to file your application for an injunction. Mm -hmm. There is less than... 30 days to go now. So you have to convince a court that you have the right to ask for an injunction at this time. For what purpose? What is the balance of convenience? And there is also the cost at this point of pulling the plug, mm -hmm. right? All of that 
are things that the court will consider and any lawyer will tell you the same. And that's, that's it. for any injunction. Isn't that in the claim already? No. We I'm just went through the claim where it asked for a I'm declaration to, to stop the yes. chief elections officer from... No, no, from no. An injunction. An injunction. And that means a permanent injunction or until such time mm -hmm. what we're talking about right now is an interim injunction meaning right now before anything is done a while put a halt to this at least till we argue this mm -hmm. you're not going to get that as of right you who are asking for the injunction must show the court why at this stage you should be given <coughs> that injunction all i am saying is that in my view this is going to be a hard climb, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not saying it can't be done. Mm -hmm. I did it. I, I prevented the Attorney General from giving the amendment, from first of all, presenting the amendment for the Referendum Act mm -hmm. to the Governor General for assent, one. Two, I also put a stop for a very long time for the Seventh Amendment. But what? I didn't wait until 11th hour and and hold on that time expired after the first ruling of cj conte at the time and in fact the referendum act was amended mm -hmm. our injunction notwithstanding and by the time we got to the privy council all of the things had shifted on the ground and the government had taken back preventative detention which we were fighting Anthony Sylvester, Kevin Arthurs, and I were fighting against that. Mm -hmm. And also they had taken back the issue of acquiring private rights over minerals, blah, blah, blah. So they had taken back. So the Privy Council said, okay, so you're asking us to make a declaration, but really and truly, the government has surrendered, so what you're asking me is academic. So when you say, mm -hmm. yes, the Veos case, let's also remember something else. The Veos case also said, because one of the things they are arguing is that the referendum is not binding. You know what the Veos case said? Mm -hmm. The law lord said, yes, maybe it is consultative in nature. However, the punishment for a government which does not follow a referendum that the people have already approved is the possibility that they could be slapped up next time it goes to an election. And that's the political price you pay. So the government, this still doesn't answer my question, though, Aha. because while I hear you saying, and I understand that you hold the perspective yes. that essentially this won't go, you don't see how this will go through as they put it forward. No, I didn't say that. Please, I let's be some, very I, careful. I, I said it's a, a very hard climb. A very hard climb, which means it will be a challenging case. What if? What if what? What if the injunction is filed? Then what the referendum would then? be postponed. Mm -hmm. And then the case? Will Explain to me what will happen. The case, if the referendum is postponed, if a court agrees with the request less than 30 days before to in, enjoin the holding, the conducting of the, of the referendum, the chief elections officer cannot move ahead mm -hmm. without offending the court. Mm -hmm. So that will stop. We will then have an argument of the case, however long that takes. And depending on what the result is, either the referendum will be held or it won't be held. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that is what could happen. On the other hand, the court could say, I'm sorry, gentlemen, because it is all gentlemen mm -hmm. in this case. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but what you're arguing is a day late and a dollar short. And no, we're not going to give you the injunction you're asking for. And the referendum will be held. Mm -hmm. Those are the two possibilities. Two things stand out for me. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you, keep, you, 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 see, you keep on saying um, um, we're actually <clears throat> at the 11th hour. Mm -hmm. So simply means you know, it, it brings forward to me, okay, uh, elite. Why submit this document <clears throat> when it's late? And that's, that's one. Two. Does a document in itself have any weight? When you say weight, it's an argument before the court. Mm -hmm. All arguments before the court have weight, and the one who decides what weight it has mm -hmm. is the, the court, judge. is the judge. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's one thing. The other thing about the 11th hour, the court could say that, or it could say, yes, good timing, let's move ahead. Mm -hmm. Which is the court likely to do? 
I've given you my view on what it is. I, I'm not saying it is impossible. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it is extremely difficult because it hinges on this if, if the state doesn't have the separation of powers, power to have entered into the treaty, if they are wrong in only having submitted it to the Senate, if it is possible that it may likely amend Schedule 1, and if you think this is the convenient time to argue this, you may succeed. I'm not saying you and won't succeed. We're yet succeed. to see what will happen before We the are court. yet to say, but I'm giving my own assessment, yeah. which I think after 30 years in this kind of business, mm -hmm. I'm entitled to give. I think it is an extremely hard climb. And I don't see how, because I've taken the time to look at the authorities that surround the claims that are being made. Mm -hmm. So why now? You'd need to ask the people who have filed why did they wait this long? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I really honestly don't know. And for the, for the mere fact that uh, it's the 11th hour, do you think these people have ulterior motives? Well, I would really like to know that because it is very interesting to me that nowhere in this document is the possibility admitted that one of the things a court could do is even if they held, even if for whatever reason they said the 1859 treaty was void. Mm. We've been told by all the authorities that the line takes on a life of its own and that's a basic principle of international law. Nowhere in this document is that reflected. Instead, they go on to cite some possibility, mm. possibility because I can't put it no higher, that Guatemala could be given from the Cebu to the Sars tomb without any justification whatsoever for making that statement because there is absolutely no legal opinion which says that at all, period. Not even um, Madly, Manly O. Hudson's and not William Bianchi's, both of those being Guatemalan um, legal opinions that were, and certainly not Lauter Pack and Bowett, not um, Lauter Pack et al., the four, um, and not Stephen Vassiani. Mm. None of them say that's what's going to happen. So that you're basing your, you're basing your challenge on a, I could put it in a plain creole, or a massive maybe. A massive maybe. Well, put, at it, put at its highest, being more scrupulously fair, it is a massive maybe that then you have to persuade the court mm -hmm. that it, this is within the realm of possibility. Given your involvement um, in, in assisting or volunteering, as you say, mm -hmm. with the referendum unit. No, I haven't said I volunteer. I said they asked me to do this mm -hmm. and they've asked me to do a couple other things. They've asked me, for instance, to address mm -hmm. some groups. But in fact, some groups have sought me out. The police, in fact, has asked me to deal with police women today. Today, yeah. yeah. So, yes. We know that the Prime Minister has, uh, in response to the joint legal opinion, he did not dismiss it. Mm -hmm. um, he, in fact, acknowledged them on a work that went into it and went on to say that the government will seek their own legal opinion, mm -hmm. perhaps not local on this issue. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of any moves of this taking place? Yeah, I understand it was done. Do you know what was the outcome of that legal opinion? I know what the arguments are going to be because I share the arguments, mm -hmm. but you know, I think we're still awaiting to see the release of that or not. I mean, no. Do that you know if they intend to release it? I don't know because now there is obviously a court case filed. Mm -hmm. okay. So sometimes before you go <laughs> let that out, you might in fact. You, you could do one or two things. Either share it with the people and say, sit here, mm -hmm. or you wait for them to make their legal arguments because they haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? They haven't put in their written submissions yet, and then you respond to them. So what's going to happen with that? That's the responsibility of the Attorney General and, and um, yeah. Who did the decide. government's legal opinion? Professor Westman James, I believe, was asked. Okay. Yeah. So that's as much as you can tell us about that's that. That's as much and as I can tell you. Because but I do like appreciate I said, because I know that I do speak on behalf. The leader, of the, and that's uh, why I use the very specific example yeah. that I know you've been working along with them uh, because no, you please, have declared. Let's, let's be really clear. 
I have been asked by the referendum unit to do certain things. Yes. I don't work along with them. Okay, Lisa, I am, I am, I am without the words to say <laughs> if you're not because volunteering, people, you're not working. I, I yeah. No, these things are. For. You know why so these things are important? Words carry meaning, absolutely. Yeah. But if you're and not next volunteering thing you know, and you're not somebody's working, somebody's gonna stick a microphone in my face and say, "How much are I you being you paid?" I'm very sure. And I want will. to be very clear: I am not being paid to do anything by the referendum unit. Let us be abundantly clear about that. Because this notion somehow that I have sold my integrity to anything is obnoxious and I will absolutely, absolutely kick against that. No question about that. A touch is about it, if you like. <laughs> but I saw we go. Well, you, have, you have responded Poor to like it that. here <laughs> and yeah. we appreciate that. But yeah. I, here's, here's a larger issue and, uh -huh. and I, I feel like if we don't discuss it, and I know you have a yes position, but I'm sure. asking you to respond to this objectively. Yes. The quagmire that we're in, the murky waters that we're now in one month before this You mean the water that has been stirred up by people? By all parties okay. involved. I'll give you that. I, I will say that. Much. I will give you that. We That's are talking opinion. about a potential that. injunction. We're having mm -hmm. for a non legal minded person, which is the majority of the yeah. persons who will be making this decision, it is getting even more confusing to uh, be absolutely. definitive in your de decision absolutely. making alone is hard. Mm -hmm. And then when things are becoming so complicated, in the public no, when arena. When things are made so complicated, because I still think the answer to the ICJ question has nothing to do with the legal challenge that is being made. If That's I am a non-legal person mm -hmm. and I hear of very notable attorneys and persons coming yeah. forward and saying this process is flawed mm -hmm. and I do not have the, the sound knowledge of the Constitution or the legal yeah. process, I may believe them. Yeah. And, and I will hear and that's you why I'm here. as mm -hmm. someone proposing a yes vote. Sure. And I will say, Never perhaps shy. you are simply pushing your agenda. Maybe. And maybe the people who have filed this lawsuit are pushing their agenda. There is nothing wrong with having an agenda. The problem comes in when you start trying to hide your agenda and don't declare your issues. All of the gentlemen who have put their name to this issue, mm -hmm. except for two, have declared themselves publicly to be a no. I mean Mike Espat, and Julius Espat, and Oscar Requena, and Rodwell Ferguson, mm -hmm. four of them. No, I don't shy away from what my bias in this is, you know. It's yes. And it's been years since the possibility raised its head in 2008. In fact, your excellent show last night showed that Said Musa was already signaling this as a possibility in 2005. Mm -hmm. We knew that one day this is where it may head up. Mm -hmm. So all of those people saying George Price never knew where we were going, nonsense. He knew that there was a possibility, at the very least, that this is where we're going to head. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying, again, everybody is entitled to their view and their bias. Mm -hmm. Everybody is entitled to fear, to concern, to worry, to emotion, to all of that. But fundamentally, what is going to happen is that the legal process will take its pace, yeah. right? The referendum will either be held now or it will be held later. Because trust me, some of the things being argued here can actually occur before the referendum still. Yeah. So because it could be laid before both houses before. And we know and which what is the what political is. we know what the political result of that will be. That's not um, the issue. It'll be and I'll say this much. Yeah. I think uh, all eyes are on where this claim will go. Uh, yeah. And uh, we appreciate you coming in to share your perspective on it. And as you said before, it is yet to unfold before the court. So yes. it's, let's wait and see. Yes, but one thing is clear that this is something that continues to be the most burning issue before us. And that will continue, I think, for another month. Before then, before, yeah, or more. And then we'll all focus on Easter.
<laughs> because that's who we are. Because it's one that's week after. That's who we are. Yeah, but thank you for coming yeah. in, Lisa. We thank appreciate you. it very Thanks much. Thanks so much. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, it'll be to discuss World Water Day.